of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I'm the Lord of soul and grave. I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone. Speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you Set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? Welcome to our confirmation service today, where we hope that all the confirmants have their candles and their stools, and we hope that if you're having communion, you got a packet. So welcome, and welcome to the folks in the parking lot and those who are live streaming as well. Let's begin with our confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. 
As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this milestone in the Confirmant's life. Today, we are mindful that you are our Good Shepherd. And we thank you for how you lead and guide us. And we thank you for the people you send in our lives to lead and guide us. We pray you'd feed us, lead us, guide us, and protect us. We ask this in your name. Amen. You may be seated. The reading today is from the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does Jesus' love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, who has yet refused his help? Let children let us love, not in the word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from truth and reassurance of our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts cannot condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of Jesus Christ and who love one another, just as he commanded us. All who would obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel for today is from the 10th chapter of John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who's not the shepherd and doesn't own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that don't belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Oftentimes this Sunday is referred to as Good Shepherd Sunday. One of the readings can be Psalm 23. Uh, David, the shepherd, wrote this psalm. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. He being a shepherd, he knowing what it is to watch over other life, knows what it is like, and he calls God a good shepherd. And uh, today, G when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, his listeners would have remembered Psalm 23, and they were probably thinking, what? Are you claiming to be God? And he was. He's claimed to be a leader. He was claiming to be the good shepherd. And nobody shepherds like Jesus. He's willing to lay down his life for the sheep, which is what he did, which is why we're here today for this Confirmation Sunday. And on this Confirmation Sunday for the Confirmants, I want you to think about 
Who served as shepherds in your life? Jesus is the good shepherd, the best shepherd, who laid down his life for you. But you think about who else has led and guided and fed you and protected you. Hopefully your parents come to mind right away. Your grandparents, I bet they prayed for you a lot too over the years. Aunts and uncles, Sunday school teachers, Bible school teachers, Bible camp leaders. These last two years, your mentors, they've laid down their life. They set aside time because they felt it was so important that you knew the Good Shepherd, who's not only your shepherd, he's your Savior as well. And we are blessed because God uses other people. Faith is a group project. Following Jesus is not something you can do on your own. Other people share the good news about him and help you walk with him. Jesus is our shepherd. And this is a milestone in your journey of faith. And it's just a milestone. Um, You can't survive in the adult world on an eighth grade faith. You need to keep wrestling and struggling with God. Stay engaged with worship. Stay engaged with youth group, read the Bible, keep on praying, and God will keep leading and guiding you all the way to eternity. At this point, I like sharing from faith statements. Um, This was an assignment the students had, three to five hundred words, kind of explaining why they believe, who are influences on their faith. Some shared their verse. Quite a few confirmants shared on difficult times they've been through already and how their faith has guided them. But this is from our confirmants today, and this is just this service. We had another reading last service for those um, in those mentor groups, but this is youth here now. The reason I believe in God is because I believe he created every living thing and he also creates peace. God wants to love him with our whole heart as he loves us. I've been taught that God and Jesus love us more than anything and they want us to love them as they do to us. He makes us feel like we're accepted with him, which we are. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. These verses, I like these, I chose these verses because it's important to remember that God will love us and forgive us no matter what. He told me this first in my baptism when the old me died and I became became a forgiven sinner and a child of God. I need to hear God's promise over and over again. I never really knew what faith was before confirmation. I'd always asked, but I could never quite understand, but now I do. Faith to me is what allows someone to have a relationship with God. Faith is what assures me that God's word is true. He really does love us and is a wonderful God. He sent his only son Jesus to earth to allow us to be forgiven of our sins. I'm so proud to say I have faith in God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. When I say I believe in God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, I'm saying I put my trust in them. I trust God to guide me through life and help me fulfill my purpose in my lifetime. I trust God to protect me from evil and to teach me many valuable lessons in my lifetime. God is always with me spiritually to help me through all that life has to offer. Greater love is no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. John 15:13. I decided on the Bible verse because when I came across this verse, 
The first part really reminded me of everything I learned through confirmation. Greater love has no one than this, making me think of God's unconditional and everlasting love, and how through my family, pastors, and mentors, I've been able to learn and understand what this true love in God's mission is really about. It's very reassuring to know that God forgives me when I do wrong. I know I'm loved by God because God loves me through the ups and downs. He loves me when I'm lonely or sad, and He loves me when I'm happy or joyful. He loves me when I make bad choices, and He loves me when I make good choices. Some people who've helped me grow in my relationship with God are my parents, pastor, mentor, my friends, and others. I'm thankful for my parents because they've taken me to church and Sunday school as I've been growing up in those places with the people. There I've learned about God's ways. Now in confirmation I've learned even more and built my relationship with God to be stronger. I believe in God because of everything around me and I learn to be thankful for everything around me. The biggest thing I've learned is that although it may seem like we have a pretty good life down here, this is only the start to what God has planned for us. After I get confirmed, I want to continue bettering my relationship with God. I'll do this by going to church consistently and learning more about the Bible along the way. Another thing I could do is share the Bible with others and help them learn about God and build a relationship with Him. I believe because God is my way of life, He's the reason I am where I am today. He has taught me through many things and taught me so many valuable lessons. He also protects me from the devil's temptations. Without God, I don't know where I'd be and how I could do things, because He is amazing. I never was very much into religion when I was younger. I used to climb the walls in the Sunday school rooms. I distracted other children. When I got older, somehow faith hit me. I don't know how, so it just did. Around 8th grade or some time period in late 7th grade summer, I assume this faith came with maturity. The Bible verse I chose is Joshua 1.9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The reason I chose this Bible verse is because it tells you to always be courageous and strong. Because God is always with you. Wherever you go, he'll never leave your side. What it means to me is that you should never be afraid because God is always at your side. No matter what you have done or said, he'll stay with you. I believe in God because he's someone I can rely on to help me with my problems. Whenever I'm sad or feel alone, I know I'm not really because God is always there for me. Having faith makes my life way better. When in uncertainty, difficulty, or fear, turning to God is always my number one option. Believing in God has helped me fight my fears and weaknesses. Ever since I can remember, my parents have been bringing me to church. Going to church for most of my youth has helped my understanding with God. Because of going while I was young, our relationship is able to be strengthened and continue strengthening throughout my life. Thank you, Confirmants, for sharing your faith in your statements. And this Sunday, again, we have these readings on Jesus being the Good Shepherd. He laid down his life for us. That's how much he loves us. And in 1 John, the uh, John writes this, We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for one another. He shepherds us, he loves us, he wants us to share that love 
in this world. Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. Not just with our words, but with our lives. And then what John says too, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. That's from John's faith statement of being with Jesus. Uh, for parents, I want to say this past two years have been interesting. It's my first lesson in pandemic confirmation. And I know it was for you and the confirmants as well. And the patients, uh, as conditions changed and how we met changed. And I know for me as pastor, I wasn't quite sure if people were paying attention because their mouths are covered. You don't know if they're really paying attention or not. And I'm sure there was things that weren't the same from stressed out pastors and mentors as well. But together we came through it. And it's part it's only a small part of your faith journey with God. And just know that there, the Lord is your shepherd. Jesus is your shepherd. He laid down his life for you. But God has sent other shepherds to you in your life as well. And, and God is calling you to be a shepherd as well, to lay down your life for others. Amen. But let's stand as we sing. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered on to find where demons dwell. When you heard the wonder of the word, I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young. I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in And you shut your weary eyes I'll be there as I have always been With just one more surprise I was there to hear your morning cry I'll be there when you are old I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. At this time, the youth, the confirmants may come forward and the rest of you may be seated. Confirmants, take your positions. Remember, spread out good, and we got three rows, right? Yep. Good. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these confirmants 
one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with gifts of your spirit, and nourished nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you've brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. So now uh, the first questions I ask you'll all answer together and the answer is I renounce them. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin and confess the faith of the church do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? You've made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the promise God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And on this one, we'll respond individually, starting in the back left, go that way, then this way, then this way in the front. Okay? Uh, do you, let me say it again. You made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the promise God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Now a question for the congregation. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Okay, at this point, you can sit down, come back one at a time with your candles and your stoles. Something about the stoles, I was going to mention during the sermon, as we get ready. Uh, the stoles are supposed to be a symbol of a yoke. Well, what's that about? Well, a yoke was for putting on animals, uh, and then they'd pull the plow or the ox cart or whatever. So it's a symbol of being able to serve, to work, to pull the plow. And uh, it's been a symbol uh, for a long time. And so the youth, the confirmants, made their stoles. They put their verses on them, their confirmation verses. And we'll be putting them on today as a sign that, yes, we are asking you to pull the plow in your Christian faith and life. Okay.
Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Clara the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Clara, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Lindsay the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm her faith, guide her in her serving, empower, him, empower her in um, her life, give her patience and suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Lindsay, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, Stir up in Olivia the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, Stir up in Kailani the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience and suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Kailani, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Amara the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience and suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Mara, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father, 
Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up and tailor the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience and suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Let your lights will shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Taylor. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Tyler the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Tyler, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Jackson the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Jackson, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Jackson the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Jackson, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Lucas the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Lucas, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Okay. 
Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Owen the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Owen, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Zach the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Zach, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, Stir up in Nathan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his serving. Give him patience and suffering. And bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Nathan, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Help us to Overcome our desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. An abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we may lay down our lives for those in need. Help us to love one another in truth and action. Lord, we pray for everyone suffering from COVID, especially in India and other hot spots in the world. Send workers and help leaders to work together to protect their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those waiting for healing among us, among them Bodie Brown, Lowell Holm, Howard Olson, Dorothy Moan, Tanner Lerman, Cindy Wiebush. Dennis Stammerval, Maureen Failer. Give them strength and healing, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And we pray for the family and friends of Hazel Scheitel, mother of Pastor Joyce Grau, as they mourn her death. Help them to hold on to your promises concerning eternal life for all who trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words and warnings of the prophets, and at the end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's join together in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now as you take your packets, just a note, there's a very thin top cellophane layer. Don't pull on the tin foil part. Try to get the top cellophane layer separated. The body of Christ given for you, take and eat. And then confirmants especially, be careful not to spill on your white ropes when you open the tin foil. I only know that from experience. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you to live and to walk in his grace. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and evermore. Amen. Now as we sing our closing song, we're hoping the congregation can out-sing the band. Oh, and they laugh. They're just teasing you. That, that would be actually pretty good. Please stand. How about we just sum it up? Let's make a joyful noise. This time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation. We believe, we believe in this broken generation when all is dark you help us see there is only one salvation we believe we believe we believe in God the Father we believe in Jesus 
Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than anthems, greater than the songs we sing. And in our weakness and temptations, we believe, we believe. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. Let the lost be found and the dead be raised in the here and now. Let love in vain, let the church live now. Our God will say we believe, we believe. And the gates of hell will not prevail for the power of God has torn the veil. Now we know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back. He's coming back again. to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a reminder as we leave, we're pretty packed, so we want the back rows to leave first, and if you cannot linger in the north exit, keeps it safer for everyone. Okay? Start from the back.